this episode, we're going to talk about sentiment analysis. So we're going to load up some tweets into a Rails application. We're going to take the text of the tweets, and then we're going to check to see how positive or how negative those tweets are um, based on the words that were written in it. So sentiment analysis is basically like, is this person saying they love or they hate this thing or are they neutral about it? Um, and so you can take any text and then analyze it and kind of uh, estimate how positive or negative that is. Now this is something that um, we're gonna do a very rudimentary version uh, using the sentimental gem, but there's a lot of stuff that you can learn about this stuff um, because in language, language is a very complex thing and so people might be sarcastic and something like this may not be able to detect that, but from a rough um, standpoint, we're gonna have a fairly good accuracy just based on the words that are in these tweets. So um, for fun, you might search something like Microsoft and you might check to see how many people say, I hate Microsoft or I love Microsoft. And you'll be able to, t to tell based on the word love and hate, you'll be able to determine, okay, well this word means positive, this one's negative, and there's different scales of all of those words. So this sentimental gem actually comes with a word list and you can load this up and it's a pretty large file, but it basically has all these words and their values on the um, scale from 1.0 to negative 1.0. And so this is uh, just a way of going about and saying, um, you know, how positive or how negative that is based on the words in the uh, text that you're analyzing. So for example, if you say love, it's like a 92.5% positive word um, and it's kind of weighed based on the usage of it in the language so there's times when people will say love and it's maybe sarcastic or something but it's rare for people to say epic or good or upright or whatever um, in some sort of negative fashion so you have all these weighings of the words and you can scroll through this and you can make adjustments to this if you'd like or add your own words um, just by downloading this file and then uploading your own version um, into the or uh, loading that into the gem when you uh, load the library. We're just going to use the built-in word list and uh, we're going to analyze some text. So we'll probably connect this to Twitter and then load up some searches and, and determine, you know, what are the sentiment in general for each tweet and then maybe an average uh, across all the tweets. So um, let's dive into implementing this gem. So let's um, create a new Rails application. We'll build a model and then we'll sync tweets into our database using the Twitter gem. And then we'll just uh, hit the local copies of the tweets in order to be able to test this out a lot easier. So let's say, um, let's say sentimental tweets is the name of our Rails application. Um, and so we'll install this, we'll install the Twitter gem next, and uh, we'll go ahead and plug in the Twitter client, and then go ahead and create a model for um, all of that. So let's dive into this, and let's say, uh, let's open up the gem file. We'll update MacVim later. Um, and so here, let's get the Twitter gem and we will grab the latest version of that. And let's go ahead and create uh, a model so that we can um, save copies of those tweets. So let's go ahead and do that once the bundle uh, command is finished. So now that that's finished installing, let's hop back over to the readme and take a look and see what we're gonna want to save as attributes in our tweet model. So um, this gem actually parses the text that you give it and then gives you, um, it gives you a, either a positive, negative, or neutral string uh, that you can get back. So you can see that when you call sentiment on some text, uh, that will give you a symbol back. We can save that and that would allow for easier searching in our database, but the actual detail of the score might be useful in a lot of cases. So you might want to analyze this and be able to adjust um, the queries based on the score rather than just the very broad, generic, positive, negative, and neutral. So the score is probably going to be the most important piece to actually cache. 
and we're gonna want to do this in cash that sentiment score um, and possibly the sentiment in general so that we have this important thing of basically like we only do this one time we only make that calculation one time so we'll save it into the database and then we can look it up because um, the text shouldn't be changing for these tweets so we will set it up so that anytime the text changes in the tweet we'll go ahead and rerun the sentiment analysis and then save those attributes on the model so let's generate our model um, and then we'll go and actually implement the syncing from Twitter and then sentiment analysis itself. So let's generate a scaffold um, called tweet and tweet will have a body, a text body. Um, and then we'll also have, uh, let's see, we'll have the sentiment and we'll have the score, which for the score we'll call it a decimal so that we can save that uh, decimal value that this uh, gem is going to give us. Then we'll run reg db migrate in order to migrate those. And we will now just implement uh, the Twitter client in order to sync some tweets down. Uh, we'll do that really simply using the Twitter gem and the search um, search that they uh, provide. So we'll just we'll just search like Microsoft or something, Rails, JavaScript, whatever. And then we'll sync those tweets to the database and then we will uh, do sentiment analysis on those. So if you head over to the configuration section in the Twitter uh, readme, it gives you an example of how to set up the client. I'm actually going to put this inside of the, uh, the tweet model and we'll have a sync method and this will just be what we use um, in order to sync this over. So I'm going to swap all of these strings instead of hard coding them. I'm going to use um, Rails application secrets. So Rails.application.secrets.access token secret. And we'll do the same thing for the other three. We'll have the consumer key, consumer secret, and the access token. Now the access tokens are going to be the ones that come from your users who have OAuth. Um, I'm going to hard code some in the secrets file for myself uh, without doing OAuth because if you go into the apps section on Twitter you can just grab that string there um, that they give you to make testing their API a little bit easier. But in the future you'd actually want to pull this like from the user model or wherever you save the OAuth tokens that you would get back from like OmniAuth. So I just pasted those in off screen, um, those keys in my secrets.yaml. You can do the same um, or put those from the user model or whatever you'd like to do. Um, and then I'm also gonna change this to be a class method so that we can access this. Um, and then we'll have uh, a query that we pass in so that we can do the client.search and we'll paste in our query. So then that way, you can paste in and use this generic method to sync any tweets of any type of query. Um, and we're just gonna, we're not gonna worry about duplicates or anything like that. We're just gonna sync, sync, sync. And uh, you can go and tweak this uh, to work however you would like. We just need some data in our application to test out the sentiment analysis part. So if we run on Rails console now, should be able to say tweet.sync and we could search for a term like Rails um, and that should load up a whole bunch of tweets, and it does. Um, and now we just need to go through each one of these tweets and save them into our database. So here we're just gonna say for each tweet that we get back, let's run a block and let's simply run the create method and we'll say that the body is the tweet text. So we'll save a copy of those and uh, that's it. So let's rerun the Rails console with that new code. So we'll say tweet.sync, uh, let's, do, let's do Rails uh, this time as well. And this is gonna go insert a whole bunch of these into our database, um, which is perfect. So that does exactly what we want. And now we need to be able to go through those tweets and then actually uh, parse them for sentiment analysis. So we haven't installed the sentimental gem yet. So let's open up our gem file and add that to the bottom. So let's get the latest version of this and let's go ahead and paste that in and uh, run bundle to install it.
So now that that's installed, let's jump back to the README for Sentimental and take a look at what we're going to need to implement into our application. So um, we might actually want to say, let's build a global sentiment analyzer, because if we were to instantiate this and load the defaults every time that we run this, we might load the dictionary database into memory a handful of times, which wouldn't be ideal. Um, depends on actually how this is implemented behind the scenes. It might not do that. Um, but you might actually be loading that word list into memory every new time that you create an analyzer, which could use a lot of memory um, and probably is the case because it allows you to customize the sentiment file based on um, what, you're, uh, what you've loaded. So chances are that this would duplicate that memory. You have to read the, the source code of this to double check on that. But what we're gonna do is load this globally and then have that ready to go anytime that we want to use it to analyze text inside our models. So we're gonna put this analyzer, um, we're gonna put this inside a initializer. So we'll have config initializers uh, sentimental.rb and here we'll make this a global variable with a dollar sign so that this will load up uh, one time when you boot your application and we'll load the defaults and that will always be ready to go in order to uh, analyze these anytime that we decide to sync our um, sentiment on our tweets. So let's actually just run the sentiment analysis in the console to check and make sure that it's working. So let's grab the last tweet um, and grab the body from that and we can just pass it into the analyzer and ask for either the sentiment or the score. So here we pass in the last tweet body and it has uh, marked it as positive. But if you wanna know why it's positive or how positive is it, then you can go and call the score method. And that is going to give us uh, basically 62.5% positive uh, for that. Now, how should we go about adding this to our models in order to set this up properly? So there's a handful of different ways that you can go about this. We've built a sync method here that allows you to sync these tweets, but that's not always the case. So when you're syncing the tweet, okay, you could simply say, let's set the sentiment uh, immediately, and let's also set the score immediately. The thing is that when you're doing that um, in, the, in something like a scaffold, that's not gonna make as much sense because you're not going to always want to take the params text and pass that into the sentiment analysis thing. You might wanna do that um, in a callback and say, well, if the body changed, let's go ahead and run this. And there's various ways that you could do about this too, because if you go for a more complex sentiment analysis method or one that takes time, um, then you might actually want to say, let's run that in a background job so that we can run that. Um, and if it takes a longer time than this gem does or whatever, we can run that behind the scenes. So I wouldn't say to add this to your create methods or update methods, because that doesn't make for a pretty seamless experience. You want the capturing of the sentiment to be behind the scenes so that whenever you interact with these objects, it automatically updates whenever something changes. So that's one of those cases where uh, before, uh, well, a callback makes sense here. So if you have a before save callback, um, here you might say set sentiment and this would only run if the uh, body changed. I'm having a terrible time typing right now. So basically we would set this so that we're only gonna want to save the sentiment if the body changed. And then that way, if you go and update this, all you have to worry about is setting the body on the tweet and then this should automatically run and update that. Now this code here could either immediately update the sentiment or it could launch a background job to go and update the sentiment if this takes longer and you have a different implementation. That would make a lot more sense for the majority of cases. Um, but in this case, we're gonna keep it simple and just say we'll set the sentiment there. Um, and we're doing this before save in order to set those values so that when it does save and does successfully um, set that, then uh, these values will automatically be included. So here we can say self.sentiment equals analyzer, uh, analyzer, 
the sentiment, and we'll pass in the body, and we can do the same thing for the score. And that should do it. So if we save this, and we can go and say, uh, let's reload our Rails application, and do tweet.sync this time, and of course, this time we need to actually make sure we pass in um, a search. So this time let's search Ruby and see what happens. So as you can see here, we're inserting a whole bunch to the database, but where you're getting is you're getting these included with, this is adding a whole lot of these, so let's cancel that at some point. Um, and so you'll get a whole lot of these and you'll see the sentiment and the scores being added automatically into the database. So anytime it inserts one of those, it's gonna check and see, hey, uh, that body is new. So we're gonna go and update that. And if you ever edit the text body of that, it will rerun it through the sentiment analysis. So here we can get the last tweet. We can say is sentiment. And we'll find out that it's positive. And if we want to get the score for it, we can get the score and you can convert that to a float. So our float value for that um, was 28.13%. So here we can say, um, if we want to double check that, we can say, let's grab the body from that and have the analyzer rerun that and give us the score and we'll see it gets the exact same value. So we know that it's working right, it's saving those to the database and uh, we're able to then use this inside our application. So we can go and create scopes around those and we can say, let's create a scope for only positive ones and we'll keep that query really simply around the sentiment one and we'll only look for the positive ones. And you can do the same thing from neutral and negative. So let's do this instead. And here if we go back to our console, we can say tweet.positive and let's count all of those. So we have almost 500 tweets that are positive. We have 120 tweets that are neutral. And we have how many negative ones? 181. So overall, Ruby has a higher uh, percentage of uh, positive tweets than negative or neutral ones, which is awesome. Um, and yeah, like that, we're able to go in and add uh, basically sentiment analysis to determine, you know, is this happy? Are people happy about this? Are they not? And you can apply it to any text that you want to possibly give that. Tweets are a fun one to analyze, but you could do this with forum posts or status updates or anything that you can imagine. Um, any user input, it's pretty fun to play with this and kind of see like, you know, maybe your GitHub and you're wondering, out of all of the issues, how many of these comments on the issues are positive or negative? So it's a lot of interesting stuff. If you support things like emojis and all that, you might actually go and edit your database of positive and negative words and include like the text for the emojis. And then you could have those and say, well, if it's a thumbs up one, then that is also a positive um, indicator or whatever. So you can actually go and modify a lot of this stuff in order to adapt to what your users are doing. Because something like this only has a, you know, a database of its own words that it's currently aware of. And while this doesn't get updated a huge amount, it's going to depend on your application. So you might actually start here and then upgrade into using something like you know, your own database that you can easily manage and adjust or your own machine learning or something like that in order to take this to the next level. This is a great introduction for sentiment analysis. It does a pretty good job for the basic implementation that it does. Um, and it's gonna do uh, more than enough for the majority of use cases unless this becomes like your, your core product or something. So uh, that's the sentimental gem. I hope you enjoyed this episode. It's pretty fun to play with this stuff. And if you want to see more of this in the future, let me know in the comments below. Talk to you in the next one. Peace.